Good afternoon. In this talk, I would like to introduce you to some of the many and diverse data portals that are currently serving the earth science community. The earth science community is not a community that typically engages with Tadwig very closely. This is partially because Tadwig has its origins in the biological sciences and the earth sciences are predominantly dominated by chemical sciences. Nonetheless, the large number of data infrastructures that have evolved over the years provides an opportunity to engage and collaborate. One of the motivations for this talk as a curator of rock and mineral collections is shown in this tree map chart of the percentage of specimens per discipline in natural science collections in Europe. What you see here is all the uh, total number of specimens in collections. You can see paleontology collections, which is one of the earth science subdisciplines. It's large and it fits in nicely with all the other biological specimens. But at the bottom right hand corner is the little world geology um, or basically the non-biological earth science collections. It's small and I've found often not completely understood. So in terms of this talk, what I'll start off with is basically an introduction to earth sciences, what it is and what it does. There are some similarities in earth science data that is shared with all other um, data, if you like. But it's really when you get into the subdiscipline level that the variation in metadata appears. Along with that is the communities that these sub subcollections, if you like, the subdisciplines that the subcollections serve, and along with that, the uh, variety of data infrastructures. I will end this talk with a, just a look at some of the data infrastructures in detail. So what is earth science, or rather, what are the earth sciences? I say are because it covers a huge variety of specimens and um, remits, if you like, starting from simple and small chemical elements, rocks, minerals, soils, fossils, all aspects of water, including atmosphere, meteorites, and even extraterrestrial. This means that there's a huge range of specimens and therefore a huge range of sub collections, if you like. There's also a huge range of sub disciplines shown here on the right. So what does earth science do? Well, like the other biological sciences, it's really focused on the environment too and trying to better understand climate change and the biodiversity crisis, particularly over a long historical time scale. In addition, though, there are other aspects of environment which the earth sciences focus on, for example, soil health or uh, changes over long time scales. Other fields that are more uh, special perhaps to the earth sciences are aspects of risk, for example natural hazards or um, critical element supply and obviously resources, resources for industry, resources for agriculture, resources for green economies. These are all drivers of research and the, um, the science um, that the earth sciences serve. In terms of sub-collections here, what I, this plot aims to show how the different sub-collections serve different communities. As you can see, the number of sub-collections serve environmental science questions, for example, fossils, rocks, water samples, but minerals hardly do. In my experience, minerals um, serve more the mining communities or material science or gemology and forensic, that kind of thing. So each sub collection has, has a different community that um, it serves and therefore data infrastructures. 
At the most simple level, though, all specimens, including your science specimens, have things in common. They have record IDs, whether it's an analytical data set or whether it's a specimen register number. There's usually a place associated, a person or event associated, a composition, an associated time, that sort of thing. They have share with across all data sets. It's really when you start to look at subcollections in detail that the metadata really does vary. For example, the way a name is, you know, there are species, minerals have species, but the um, the way that species are defined and what it encompasses is completely different. Meteorites don't have species, so to speak. They have, they're named after the place they fall or find. Um, time, that's the way that's recorded is incredibly variable. Stratigraphy is super important for fossils and sediments, but of, irrelevant to the other subdisciplines, and so on and so forth. So this means that each subcollection, subdiscipline, has basically got its own um, data infrastructure. I show here a range of data infrastructures along the top. In bold are data infrastructures that have set of <laughs> specimens associated with them. Um, and then along the left hand side is what the specimens are. You can see I've even got GBIF here, which has fossil data in it, but it doesn't represent any of the subcollections as far as I'm aware. So now we're going to move on to looking at some of these data infrastructures in a bit more detail. I'll start with Geocase because this is um, a data portal uh, which is managed by the CTAF ESG group, which I chaired, have chaired for the last three years. Um, and this is a data portal to represent minerals, rocks, meteorites and fossils. Currently, most of the data are from CTAF institutions, which are is a European based thing. Um, it uses the ABCD EFG schema, the Darwin core schema. Um, it tends, it doesn't have any vocabularies of its own, but it uses vocabularies, um, standard vocabularies from other sites, such as macrostrat stratigraphy. Um, in terms of stable identifiers, there's no generated within the site, although we are planning to have um, stable identifiers for specimen landing pages that's being developed. Um, otherwise, we link in with stable identifiers from other sites. Another portal is the CSAR portal, or otherwise geosamples.org, and that aims to um, host a much wider variety of material samples, everything from specimens to samples of specimens. It includes biology, even gas, liquid, um, sediments, tephrosynthetic specimens. There are vocabularies developed within the um, portal for to deal with samples, hierarchies and metadata. This is a site that also generates its own stable un identifier for the, each material sample record. They're called IGSN numbers or International General Specimen Number numbers. And just below my image is an example of all the different um, biological specimens that you will find in the portal. MINDAT it was originally a mineral database but has grown wider and deeper and is um, a really go-to resource for anything geological. It now even includes uh, fossils harvested from the um, Paleobio database, PBDB, um, and has a huge number of publications um, also. It is also becoming increasingly a site that generates stable identifiers. The I mentioned Geocase uses its mineral species stable identifiers, but also it's a very important um, location uh, um, resource for provenance look um, stable identifiers related to the mines or places that you can find fossils there's a lot of geological 
maps in it and um, also historical information or uh, multilingual information, for example, mineral names in different languages or from different eras. There's, um, I mentioned these two soil databases, which are um, ISRIC and WOSIS. ISRIC is more of a database of databases showing um, soil characteristics across the globe. WOSIS is more um, as related to specimens for soil profiles. And in a similar way, Astromat is also a database of databases. This is a resource for the analytical data related to extraterrestrial specimens, for example, meteorites or even cosmic dust. Um, and it uses a number of identifiers related to the mission or the sample number. The, um, and again, is a resource of publications and people. It uses ORCID identifiers for people. So in summary, earth sciences is different to the biological sciences. Um, it is broad, it is varied, and it's full of different vibrant communities. Most disciplines are underpinned by chemistry rather than biology, except for paleontology. <laughs> um, in terms of data infrastructures, there's a lot of different data sets and portals, That's only some of which I've mentioned here but they do seem to be starting to um, concentrate. And there's also a rapidly increasing use of unique identifiers. There's potential to reach further, I feel, through, um, through species, place, time, composition, and chemistry. Anyway, I hope you've found that a useful presentation and I look forward to any questions you may have.